I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired, bringing you another true account of the silent service. This is the story of the first combat patrol of the USS Kavala, which had been due to be commissioned in New London, Connecticut on March 1st, 1944. But her captain and some of her officers got the idea that it might make her a lucky ship if her commissioning could be set ahead by one day to the 29th of February in that leap year of 1944. Sailor superstition? Maybe. You can judge for yourself when you've seen the story of the Kavala's patrol. At the submarine base, New London, Connecticut, the cradle and home of the submarine force, the Kavala was duly commissioned. Set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Set the watch. Dismiss the crew. On deck, section one, crew dismissed. Well, Tom, I just checked the records. Kavala has the distinction of being the only leap year submarine in the United States Navy. She'll be lucky, sir. I know it. I'd sure like to know what the Navy Department thought before they approved the request. <laughs> well, now we got the Kavala shot with luck. All we need is to make a real crew out of this mob of landlubbers. Well, I'm taking no chances on leap year being enough to do the job right, Chief. My ma sent me this four-leaf clover, and a fellow on our farm gave me the rabbit's foot when I joined up. And a girl I know named O'Brien gave me the St. Christopher medal, and Paul Thiedemann Goldberg gave me the mezuzah. <laughs> Our leap year lady's well insured. Leap year lady, eh? That's a mighty fine name for her. Her trials completed, Cavalla departed New London on 11 April. During her long trip, through the canal to Pearl Harbor and thence to Midway, all hands toiled endlessly to bring their ship and themselves to the highest peak of efficiency. <coughs> Test dives, torpedo exercises, sonar and radar tracking, gun drills and a hundred others, all in anticipation of combat. On 4 June, while refueling and taking on stores at Midway, some of the submarine captains were called to a top secret briefing. Now, to sum up, gentlemen, a joint force of Marines and Army will hit Saipan on 15 June. We don't know just where the main Japanese task force is, or more important, where it will be on that date, but we must, repeat must, locate it and keep it off the beachhead. Therefore, the Admiral wants me to emphasize your primary mission is reconnaissance. Your job is to locate the enemy task force and get that information back where it will do the most good. Now, bear this in mind. Your mission is to report, not attack. That's all, gentlemen. Well, how about that, Jim? All in a day's work, huh? Just report, don't attack. Well, sure, for the Albacore. Just off hand, I can remember she sunk a cruiser, two destroyers, a cargo ship, and a bunch of others. But this is Cavallo's first patrol. Well? The officers and men of the Albacore aren't going to like it a bit more than Cavallas. That I can promise you. Well, I'm not sure I'll tell my boys about it, Jim. Not going to take the edge off. Well, maybe by the time we sight a target, our orders will have been changed. I hope so. Here's hoping your leap year lady won't stay an old maid too long. <laughs> On 4 June, Cavalla departed midway. So what are you raving about, Chief? Sure, it's my birthday today. Who ought to know? You or me? Why is it always me which has to educate you poor dumb swabbies? What do you think today is, boy? I don't think. I know. We sailed from Midway yesterday morning, right? Right. And yesterday was June 4th, right? Right. So what does that make today? June 6th. What? Now nah, take it easy, son. So happens that we crossed the international date line early this morning. June 5th is gone forever. And my birthday with it. <laughs> I've been wrong. <laughs> happy birthday, Chief. Yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. That's a swell looking cake, Mexico. Thanks a lot. And here's a birthday special just for you. Hush puppy. I just can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, made with genuine cornbread mix. I got the recipe from Lieutenant Deneg. Oh, the things you folks from the South can dream up. <laughs> Kavala proceeded towards her assigned patrol area on the night of 15 June. 1900. We'll be in our patrol area in a few minutes. There's an intercept we picked up, Captain. I just decoded it. The first wave of Marines hit Saipan Beachhead 0840 under heavy fire. Enemy divisional guns and mortars are concerned. The rest of it was all gobbled up with static, sir. You knew they were going in, Captain? Yeah. We were briefed on it at Midway. Sure must be rugged on those beaches right now. The battle for Saipan had just begun. It was to be a long and bitter one. Ship convoy bearing 320 true. Come left for 080. Come left to course 080. There they are, two large ships. One, two, three destroyer escorts making high speed. See them, Tom? Those two big ones look like tankers. TDC and plot show they're making 23 knots, and the range is opening fast. Too much speed for us to have a prayer of making it end around and overtaking them. Get off a contact report, the comp sub pack. Urgent prestance. Those tankers may mean that the big stuff is somewhere around. Let's hope so, sir. And let's hope we're in position to fire a nice bunch of fish at them. Less than 20 hours later, Kavala was recharging her batteries in a calm sea. This almost peaceful routine came to an abrupt end at 7.57 in the evening. Radar to bridge, contact bearing 240, getting several pips. Come to course 240, all ahead flight. Pips are fading in and out. Must be extreme range. We'll close them fast. More pips appearing. Pips are getting strong and steady. Seven large pips showing now. One very large. Range 25,000 yards. How do you figure it, Captain? Only one thing it can't be. A large enemy task force. The big pip's probably a carrier or a battleship. The others are cruisers or destroyers. We ought to be close enough any minute to spot them. Picking up confused sounds of distant screws. Sounds like several ships. Oh, very well, Tom. Got them. Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! <laughs> Lord, We're on to something big this time. Captain's got a whole mess of targets in sight. Oh, it's a carrier, all right. Four, five, six battle wagons. At least four cruisers. Take a quick look, Tom. You'll never see a sight like this again. A whole Japanese task force from a seat on the 50-yard line. What a sight! Perfect setup. They're not even zigzagging. Down, Scope. That carrier's a sitting duck, Captain. 
generated bearing 335, range 3000. All torpedo tubes ready. More screws coming fast. Sounds like destroyers. At least five, maybe more. Closing fast. Shifting to short scale. Your mission is to report. Not attack. Your mission is to report. Not attack. Carry her right in our laps. Do your stuff, fellas. Please. Torpedo depth setting, Captain. Generated bearing 295, range 1400. Let's go. Heavy screws coming fast. Many high speed screws all over the dial. Down scope. Take it down to 100 feet. Sir? No choice, Tom. Our orders to report, not attack. Make every attempt to count the number of ships as they pass. Screws passing directly overhead. 12, 13, 14, 15. Carry your screws moving away fast. have a couple of destroyers covering. I gotta hand it to you, Captain. I couldn't have done what you did in a hundred years. I'd have knocked off that carrier and taken my chances. Report or no report? No, you wouldn't, Tom. You're just saying that because you haven't had the time to think about it that I have. If we'd attacked, we might have been counterattacked and sunk. Even if we hadn't been, the rest of the task force might have held us down so long we'd never have gotten our report off in time. You'd have done just what I did. Because you had to. Uh, as soon as those escorts get far enough away so we can surface, be ready to transmit following message to Comsub Pack. Large enemy task force. Carrier. Six battleships. Eight cruisers. Many destroyers. Course. 110. Speed. 19 knots. I'll find out what our own position is and add it to the message. Oh, yes, sir. Well, they will find some more targets. Never like that one. Leap your lady for luck, huh? What a hoodoo that turned out to be. During the next couple of days, Cavallo was far from being a happy ship. Here you are, Malco. I fried up another bunch of those hush puppies for you. Thanks a lot, Miss Carr. I guess I'm just not very hungry. Message from Tom Subpack to all submarines in this area, sir. Well, let's hear it, Zeke. Cavallo's report completes the picture. You may now shoot first, report later. Good hunting. Well, that's the general message, Captain. Then follows a transmission for Cavallo. It reads, congratulations to Cavallo for contact report of utmost importance. Well done. Post the paraphrase of both messages on the board, Zeke. Maybe everybody will feel a little better about it now. Yes, sir. And I guess those troops in Saipan owe us a vote of thanks, even if they don't know it. Meanwhile, our ground forces were fighting grimly toward their objectives, unaware that the Japanese task force Kabbalah had spotted was headed for them. The avowed enemy mission was to support their troops on Saipan and to bring about the complete destruction of the attackers. But with Admiral Spruant certain of the location, course, and objectives of the Japanese task force, he could now order Admiral Mitchell's task force 58 into position for attack. The morning of 19 June, the day that was to be the payoff, though no one could know that as yet. The first word came shortly before 10 o'clock. Just picked up an intercept, Captain, from comm subpack to the Albacore. It reads, intelligence believes carrier you sank was Taiho. Great work. You think that was the carrier we saw, Captain? Oh, sounds probable, Tom. Well, as long as we had a passer up, I'm sure glad Jim Blanchard got her.
Japanese had already launched more than 300 planes, confidently expecting to find our fleet close inshore, engaged in support of the Saipan operation. They were completely unaware that at 10.05 that morning, 100 miles nearer than they do, Admiral Mitchell had given the orders to launch his fighters. At almost the same instant, Kavala, picking up unidentified planes on her radar, had submerged. Just 43 minutes later... Getting confused water noises. Bearing 2, 9, 7. Up scope. Same bearing as those planes were, Tom. Carrier. Two cruisers. One destroyer. Angle on the bow. Starboard. One five. Down scope. Ah, oh, leap year lady. I knew she'd pay off. Silhouette book ready, Tom. She's a big one, making about 25 knots. Just landing some planes. Heavy screws at high speed. Bearing two, nine, and six. Past their light screws bearing 297, closing task. The two cruisers are on the carrier's port bow. The destroyer's on the starboard beam about a thousand yards distant. We'll be firing from just about underneath the destroyer. Well, any chance of letting that DD go by before we shoot it? Not unless we want a chance losing this one. We'll try for about a 90 degree starboard track from the bow tubes. Up scope. Now you take this look, Tom. Chugaku class, Captain. I'm sure of it. Chugaku, they say. That's one of the biggest. Sorry for what I said before, guys. Nice going. Keep it up. Shifting the short scale. Heavy screws closing fast. Also high speed screws closing. Generated range 3400. Bearing 342. Up scope. Take a quick look, Judd. Ooh-wee! Shikoku, no doubt of it. Stand by for setup. Bearing. Mark. Three, four, five. Range. Mark. One, eight, double, O. Now, scope. Open the outer doors. We're ready to shoot. Angle on the bow. Starboard 50. All tubes ready? All tubes ready. Normal order. Speed high. Set depth at 15 feet. Normal order. Speed high. Depth set 15 feet. High speed screws coming fast. Oh, that must be the destroyer. Up scope. Angle on the bow. Starboard 5-5. Five, five. Destroyer coming right at us. Down scope. This is it. Final bearing and shoot. Up scope. Stand by. Bearing. Mark. 348. Down scope. Set. Shoot. Number four fired electrically. Number five fired electrically. Blood negative. Take her deep. Number six fired electrically. Estimate 48 seconds to Peter running time. Flank. All ahead, flank. Rig for depth charge. Rig for solid running. 45 seconds. 46. 47. 48. 49. 50. Hit! Number two hit! Number three hit. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. For the next three hours, Kavala took a murderous beating, unable to shake off her pursuit. A total of 106 depth charges battered her, breaking loose her shaft packing, flooding her main induction pipes, forcing her to run at a steadily increasing up angle, merely to maintain her depth. But in the sky above her, 
The almost incredible victory, which was to be dubbed the Marianas Turkish Shoot, was in full swing. The Japanese, taken by surprise, were losing planes literally by the hundreds. Of the two waves launched by Admiral Ozawa, the enemy lost a fearful total of 404. Only 18 of their planes succeeded in breaking through, and of these, exactly one landed one bomb on the USS South Dakota. The planes that did survive sought in vain for carriers to which to return. Albacore had sunk to tie hope. Kavala, still being death charged, lay hidden, while Shokaku, a fire from three torpedoes that had set off her aviation gas, sank. The third enemy carrier, the Hitaka, was sunk by Admiral Mitch's plane. Before the battle had ended, our flyers were to account also for an enemy fleet oiler and a destroyer, as well as badly damaged three other carriers, a battleship, and three cruisers. It was a dark day for the Imperial Japanese Navy, and its foundation had been laid when Admiral Spruance received Kavala's vital intelligence report. While our troops pressed forward to victory on Saipan, none of them knew that they owed a great part of their immunity from aerial attack that might have overwhelmed them to 88 officers and men aboard a submarine on her maiden patrol. Nothing for the last half hour. Sound? Are you getting anything? No, sir. Well, let's go up and take a look. Play it up slowly to periscope depth. Up slowly to periscope depth. It'll have to be slowly, Captain. We've got a four degree up angle just to hold even. And I tell you, there were 105 depth charges. I counted. Well, who didn't? But there was 106. You missed one double header. Oh, as long as we sank that carrier, who cares? <laughs> from battle stations, secure from silent running. Any sign of the carrier, sir? Not a trace. Either she's laughed off three hits, or she's on the bottom. Well, this is the captain. Now hear this, all hands. We just received the following message from Comsub Pack. The ball is sinking in Chicago, confirmed by two planes from Lexington who saw her sink in flames. The Bala's contact report helped make this Turkish shoot by carrier aircraft possible. Proceed Taipan for fuel. You help take it. Now use it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now it gives me great pleasure to present to you Captain James B. Castler, retired, who was a navigator of the Kavala during the memorable scenes you have just witnessed. It's good to see you again, Jug. Glad to see you, Admiral, and I must say I got a real kick out of reliving the Kavala's first combat patrol. Your leap year lady surely lived up to a lucky christening, didn't she? I'm proud to say that she did. That decision to pass up a perfect shot at that first carrier must have been an awfully tough one for your skipper to make. Yes, he said it was just about the toughest he'd ever faced. It surely made us all unhappy at the time. Well, it certainly paid off, not only in your sinking of Shokaku and possibly Albacore's getting Tai Ho, but in saving the lives of uncounted numbers of Marines and GIs on Saipan. As you know, very few of our submarines were lucky enough to so much as see a carrier during the whole war. So when we had to pass our first chance, we were pretty sure there'd never be another. Well, when the miracle did happen two days later, you certainly proved you were ready to handle it. Congratulations on a fine job. Thank you, Admiral. We hope you'll be aboard again when we bring you another true story of the silent service. Safe and force will pass the word 
in the future get to be at the same as long as there's a submarine there underneath the sea. So wait for dive and take the car. Go down, down, down underneath the ocean. Fear is bad to find me now. In the deep blue underneath the sea.